This lemon tea is delicious. Hi, I'm Michelle. This sour lemon is actually made using a food dryer. Until a minute ago, it looked like this. The color looks as rich as a fresh, juicy lemon. Today, I'll introduce you to Takumi who makes innovative food dryers that keep discoloration and deformation to a minimum. I visited Yamaguchi City, Yamaguchi Prefecture in Western Japan. Hello, I'm Michelle. Oh, hello, I'm Kihara. Today's Takumi is Koichiro Kihara. He is the managing director of a food dehydrator manufacturing company and is in charge of projects and designs. Were those made using the special dehydrator? That's right. The colors are so vivid. That's the part our customers are most surprised about, the bright colored finish. Dried food is popular because it is nutritious and can be preserved. But the drawback was that the original color would change during the drying process. The Takumi solved that problem with his dehydrator and showed me what his machine could do. So this is it? You can make dried food using this? Yes. The company has other types of dehydrators, but he explained using the smaller version. Uh, please take a look. They have just been dried. Whoa! <laughs> Pineapples! That's right, they're dried pineapples. It smells sweet and the colors are beautiful. Compared to dried pineapples made using conventional drying machines, there is an apparent color difference. Why does the color come out so beautifully? The discoloration of food while drying is because of the activity of enzymes. Our dehydrator precisely adjusts the temperature to control enzyme activity. Many fruits and vegetables have enzymes that set off color changes. The enzymes activate at a temperature between 30 to 50 degrees Celsius. With a conventional dehydrator, the food reached a temperature at an early stage of drying, when the enzymes are most active. This led to the discoloration. To stop the enzymatic activity, the temperature of the food had to be kept under 30 degrees at the early drying stage. The Takumi thought of not only changing the standard air temperature, but also controlling the temperature of the food itself. But when food starts to dry, the vaporization heat is taken away, which means the temperature of the food changes differently from the surrounding air. So the Takumi installed two types of thermometers, which is this. The thermometer in the front is for measuring the air temperature. The one in the back is called a wet bulb thermometer and has a wet cloth wrapped around it. The temperature displayed on the wet bulb thermometer is believed to be almost the same as food that contain a lot of moisture. By looking at this temperature, the Takumi controlled the food to stay under 30 degrees. He dried the food well enough until the enzymes became less active, then finally raised the temperature above 30 degrees. As a result, he was able to make dried food without losing much color and freshness. This method has direct link to the history of the company. Before going into the food business, the company was in the business of drying tobacco leaves for many years. To dry tobacco leaves, they needed to activate the enzyme to give the leaves a yellow finish. Through this experience, the Takumi came up with an adverse method of limiting the enzyme activity, creating a vivid colored finish. But the temperature that promotes enzymatic activity varies depending on the food, so the Takumi had to adjust the balance of the temperature for each type of food. Take an apple, for example. Depending on the production region, its composition is different. So I put a lot of effort into finding the right temperature range and the right humidity range to achieve the most delicious and colorful dried apple. 
The Takumi continued to experiment with more than 500 different types of food that had a potential for commercialization. It took five long years to finally figure out the perfect temperature and drying time for each of them. Furthermore, the Takumi succeeded in cutting down energy by one-third by reusing vapor heat. By making use of the long experience and knowledge, the Takumi developed the innovative food dehydrator. They're all so colorful! What is this thin one? They're onions. Onions? To make it this white was quite difficult. I would be happy if people from around the world could experience the difference in taste and finish that this dehydrator can produce. Today, I brought some dried fruit made with the Takumi's dehydrator. The vibrant colors certainly make them look more appetizing. They make my mouth water. Well, please give it a try. Okay, I'm going to try the watermelon. I try orange. Mmm. Can you hear the sound? It's really crunchy. Mm -hmm. I've never had dried watermelon before, but this is really nice. It's really sweet and delicious. Mmm. Tasty and delicious. I often travel to extremely dry areas for excavation projects. It would be a perfect snack to take along because it's tasty and nutritious. That's a great point. And we see a lot of dried fruit on the market, which contain added sugar to make them look good. But the Takumi's dried fruit is 100% natural and has nothing added to keep its beautiful color. So it's healthier. That's great. Thank you very much, Michelle. So Dr. Mizushima, how would you wrap up today's topic? We looked at cellulose nanofibers and learned about its advantageous properties, but there is another feature I want to point out. It is that CNF is derived from plant fibers, so its production and disposal are safe for the environment. Given that cellulose nanofiber uses wood as its raw material, I hope CNF will branch out into other fields and provide solutions for a better world. Thank you, Dr. Mizushima. And that's all for today. See you next time on Science View.